And you're very welcome to this somewhat ill-illusioned version of the Irish Photography Podcast. My name is Greg Snell, and I am coming to you from the control room in a very cold and cloudy North Germany. And on this edition of the Irish Photography Podcast, we've got two very special guests, which I'd like to introduce now. We've got Dermot O'Donovan from up in Limerick and Darren Spoonley from down in the County Cork. Welcome, gentlemen. <laughs> Hi, Greg. Thank you very much for having us on the Irish Photography Podcast. I feel so brilliant. I feel amazed. Yeah, man. Now, before you get too excited, I've got to roll that intro. Hold on now. Hold on. All right, here we go. I don't know who you are, but welcome to the Irish Photography Podcast. Sit back, relax, and listen about cameras gear, settings, stories, and all things photography. Join Dermot and Darren on Ireland's Best Photography Podcast. Let's go. Now, this is a very special and bonus edition of the Irish Photography Podcast because you may not be aware that Dermot and Darren are coming up on 100 aired episodes, which is a mighty achievement and something that you guys should definitely be proud of. So coming up on 100 episodes, I wanted to reach out to them and turn the tables on the Irish Photography Podcast and shine the light on these two for a little while, ask them some questions and let them tell you their story. So that is what we're gonna do here today. Are you guys ready? Are you okay with that? Oh, more than happy, man. Let's go. I can't wait for it. But I hope you didn't dig up too much dirt on me and Darren. Well, Darren's got some skeletons in his closet, but me, I'm clean as a whistle, so I'm all good to go. Well, you know, I mean, look, by default, I am older, so I am going to have more skeletons than you <laughs> built up anyway. So now if, Greg, if you found a few, mm, okay, maybe we'll have to plead the fifth or kind of, you know, neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see what you got in us. But yeah, thanks a million for having us on. It's such an honor, I suppose, really, if you had to have a chat with us about us, because, you know, we've been doing what we've been doing and just having fun. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're delighted to talk to you about the Irish Photography Podcast. And as you say, almost, yeah, 100 episodes. Yeah, it is very, very impressive. And uh, to start this uh, episode of the first ever bonus special edition of the Irish Photography Podcast, I want to learn a little bit more about you guys like pre-podcast. So for anybody who's watching that hasn't heard of the Irish Photography Podcast or doesn't know who you guys are, this is a chance for you to introduce yourself to them. So let's start with Darren because you are my favorite, as you know. So oh, I'd like to Christ. hear from you first, definitely. Um, and uh, <laughs> Dermot, you'll get your chance, all right? But for now, let's uh, begin with Darren. So tell me, who is Darren Spoonley? I'm Darren Spoonley. I'm from Cork in Ireland. It's the best city in Ireland, by the way. Everybody else says that, you know, Dublin is the capital, but Cork is the best. And don't ever listen to anybody else. And if you do come visit Ireland, make sure you come to Cork. But um, I'm a landscape photographer. I'm a one-trick pony, really, Greg. I take photos of the landscape. That's about it. But... I enjoy what I do and I'm passionate about it. And I, I learn every time that I go out and I suppose, you know, I meet people and that's the biggest thing for me. Photography is generally a solitary sport, but I love meeting people and I've managed to do that so far. Okay. And uh, Dearman, tell us a little bit about yourself. Your second favorite person in the whole wide world. Well, I picked up my first camera back in September 2013. And it was just really a bug ever since then. And I am known as the king of gas. So that kind of spurred me on to get new stuff and kind of improve my lifestyle as a photographer but it wasn't just landscape photography where I fell in love with it <clears throat> it was everywhere it was portraits taking pictures of dogs taking pictures of rivers uh, weddings absolutely anything that I could take a picture of I was taking a picture of it now granted it wasn't very good at the time but that's where you make most uh where you learn uh, you, um, what, was going to, what am I trying to say? Uh, you learn from your mistakes. That's where you're going to improve on. So I've done that to a recent degree. And uh, yeah, it's what, 2020 now. And yeah, so seven years on, 
I'm still loving photography as if it was the first day. Awesome. And we're going to dig into a little bit of how you got into photography and more about your business too, because I find that's really interesting and I think will be uh, interesting for the viewers to know as well. Uh, but let's start with you, Darren, like jumping right into the topic of photography. When did you start taking pictures and what got you interested in photography? I think I had my first camera when I was under 10. Um, I think my first camera that was my son, my own was I was around 12 and I don't even know so what was. So is that like 50 was, years ago? <laughs> yeah, a long time, yeah. Long time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, look, it's film camera, so it's before the digital day, but it, even the film that it was was totally different because I'd never seen anything like it before or again. It was a circular disc and within that you had the negatives and that would roll around the top of the camera and you take your photograph. Um, and that was the first one I had at the age of 12. And I kind of always took photographs and... Uh, People, when I was a kid, I suppose, would say, oh, geez, you have an eye for the photograph. And I didn't know what they meant. I was just taking photos. But I just progressed on and progressed on. And, you know, I love taking the photos. That's what I really enjoyed about it. And, um, you know, I tried to do different things, I suppose, with different cameras and many different iterations of your digital camera when they first came out. I mean, OK, they were one megapixel cameras. I think when I got one, it was five megapixel. And I was like, oh, yeah. Can't wait to use this thing. But, you know, it was good at the time. But you look back in it now, you go, OK, like, how did I survive with it? So they were the kind of the compact cameras that I started with. And then I moved on to getting my first DSLR. Uh, I think it was in around 2003. Um, and it was the Canon uh, the Rebel XTI or the XT, I think it's called in the US, but it was the Canon uh, 1000D. And at that point, then I said, okay, hang on, I can play around with all these settings now and I can do all these things that I've seen other photographs uh, over the years in different magazines and books and stuff like that. Um, and I kind of really got bitten by the bug. But, you know, when I kind of look back in it, Greg, and I kind of wonder where it came from, my brother um, was always into photography. When I was a kid, he had a camera and he also was developing film in our bedroom. And oh, wow. I used to hate it because there's three different liquids that you need to use. And of course... He'd put the things that he was using, the liquids down, not on his bed, but he put it down on my bed. And of course, it would bleach everything. So every time I came into the room, I knew he was after developing. And I also couldn't open the door because if there was a sign in the door, no, then it was a dark room. There was a red light coming out. If I walked in, I was being killed. So I kind of learned it by default, but I had the passion for it, I suppose, innately. Um, but that's really where it started for me, Greg. Yeah, I think that's really unique, to be honest. Like coming from the new generation of uh, photographers, I never worked with film. You know, I started with a digital camera just out of high school. So uh, you have that whole sort of level of experience, which I think is base knowledge uh, within photography, uh, which kind of is a good segue into my next question for Dodd, because you just told us a little bit, uh, Dermot, about your uh, start with photography and how long you've been taking photos. But as I understand it, you actually went to school for photography correct yeah that's right um soon after buying my first camera like i said i just got addicted to photography so i enrolled in a night course because there was a lot of family and friends saying oh you're brilliant but they're never going to tell you the truth anyway so that's why i never ask for critique from family or friends in any shape or any way shape or form so but they were saying look you have a knife right why don't you kind of do a bit more with it so i did a night course did really well in that night course and then the lecturer of that course was saying would you not enroll as a full-time student? And I say, oh man, like I got a job, I got a family to feed, everything. I'd be going back as a mature student. I don't think I can do it. But I did, I took the plunge, talked to my wife uh, or my girlfriend at the time. And she said, yeah, just go for it. Because what do you do now? Like, do you, can you see yourself doing this for the rest of your life? And I was like, not really. So I did, I enrolled in college and uh, as a mature student and I absolutely loved it. I, I loved every part of college. I was there, first student there every morning. I was the last one to leave. I was inundated with all this equipment. I had to do film cameras, uh, film photography, digital photography, absolutely every aspect of photography from portraits, landscape, to lectures, to uh, talking with other students, team building, you to do computers, you to learn how to build a business. It was absolutely everything all enthralled into a two year course. And it was, I just, I just loved it. Absolutely. I love going to school. Isn't that a weird thing to say? Like, cause normally you're like, no, I don't want to go to school. Uh, I studied adventure tourism in Canada, as you guys know. So going to school was definitely fun for me as well. That's uh, really interesting, dude. I think that you guys know that there's a lot of people, especially in the YouTube world of photography that aren't classically trained. I, I did watch your vidcast with Michael Shane Bloom uh, last week where he also went to school for photography, but the majority of the people that I meet 
athlete that do this professionally studied at YouTube University. You know, they're self-taught and uh, they've just done it through experience and through traveling and through just, you know, uh, failures and learning from mistakes and uh, and just having that passion and that purpose to, to go forward and make it a career. And I think photography is kind of unique that way because from what I understand, Darren, you did not study photography, right? You are self-taught and, uh, and you are a self-proclaimed graduate of the YouTube University. <laughs> yeah. Is that correct? Absolutely, yeah. You know, I mean, look, as I said, I kind of had an early hand at photography, but I suppose from a digital point of view, everything I've kind of learned and how to control the controls of the camera uh, you know, I don't, I'm a male, I don't read a manual. I mean, look, okay, you know, I'll catch that and throw that in the bin when I get a camera and then I'll try and figure it out. But if I want to be able to get the technical details of something, then YouTube is what taught me not only from, like I guess, how to use the camera, but what to expect when I get the image. And, you know, that really helped me because, again, when I, I don't know, anybody that's that shot film will know this, is that when you take your photos, you then run the roulette of waiting to see them coming out after being developed. Because you really don't know. You, you you could not see if you got the photo right. You know, you had to go on what you thought was going to be a right exposure. You don't know if you got the image. Was it sharp? Was it anything? Whereas now with a digital camera, you can get all that straight away in the back of your camera. Um, so knowing how to do that. And I've, I suppose I've learned from that is that I try and take the photograph in camera and get it as close as possible in camera. I don't mm -hmm. understand Photoshop because it's just far too many buttons for me. So, you know... There's other people there then that would say, okay, I'll, I'll get that later. I can get the photograph now. I'm going to take bang, 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 and I'll put it all together when I go home. That's great, and there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. it's just a process that I would do is try and understand, you know, from a photography point of view. I mean, I, I didn't learn in college about the exposure triangle, but the exposure triangle is so vital that if you figure it out, then you can do quite a lot. Um, but I think, you know, one of the things, and it's something I suppose I've learned in, in, in life overall, is you can learn something in college. And you can learn something in a way that you enjoy something. So it no longer becomes a chore. And as Dermot is saying there, you know, first thing in the morning, last thing in the evening, that wasn't a chore. That was you just gorging on the information because you loved it and you got better. And it's much easier to be good at something or enjoy something, I suppose, if you actually have a passion for it. So instead of actually being going through something no, that course. you don't enjoy, you know, so that's how I learned by just watching exactly that. You know, Professor YouTube basically thought me the things that I need to know to go up the next levels and the next levels, you know? Yeah, no, I understand. So let me uh, transition that to the kind of a hard question. Dodd, given what Darren just said, oh, by the way, I don't know if people know that your nickname is Dodd, D-O-D. <laughs> so when I'm saying Dodd, I'm referring to, to Dermid. You can probably tell them how you got that nickname, or maybe we'll just leave that as a secret and they can find out by, by searching you on the internet and digging up all your dirt. <laughs> anyway, so hard question for you. Now you went to photography school as a mature student, you know, it's a, it's kind of risky. Not a lot of people would go ahead and do that, uh, but you did it and you loved it. And you're now a professional photographer running your own business in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, would you suggest to people, even if they're like middle-aged or whatever, to go to school for photography? In Ireland, no, because then it's uh, making more photographers so I get less business. <laughs> but you're in a different country. Yeah, go for it. No, I, I, I tell a joke. Absolutely 100%. But you have to you have to understand market value and is the market flooded? Yes or no? No, the market here in Ireland, it is flooded to a certain degree. But if you're really good at what you do and you're very smart at mar marketing and you're well able to use your camera and you get very creative, you make a name for yourself, you make a stamp and make yourself different from everyone else. Make yourself unique. That's how you're going to stand out from a crowd and that's how you're going to get business. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that uh, that's really like good points, valuable points. Now, Darren, what's your take? Uh, do you, would you like recommend somebody to go to photography school or would you recommend that they just go out into the world and, and learn on, on their own time? That's a very interesting question. It depends on what you want to get from the end of it. Like Dermot is a professional photographer. I'm not. I'm an amateur. It's a passion for me. So if you want to do something professionally, I would suggest you learn professionally um, and have some way of knowledge in the background of what to do if you are good and how to market, as you say, that Dermot said, but also it's going to be profession. So profession by its very definition is something you get paid for to do. So you're going to have to do something good enough for somebody to want to pay you. So, you know, you could go down the route of, okay, being good, but it's the extra bit above that. 
And I agree with you, Dermot, absolutely, 100%. It's about being unique and standing out uh, and giving something to your customer that they can't get from somewhere else. And I think that's where uh, the difference, I think, comes in. So either learn how to do photography, but then learn how to be good at business to be able to be professional in that way. Or like me, you know, I learn how to do photography. I don't make any money from it. I don't want to make any money for it. So my motivation then to create is my own motivation and it's not fueled by a need for money, let's just say, you know? Yeah, no, I, I think that that's a great answer and that's kind of a serious topic. So for those of you who are still watching our very special edition here of the Irish Photography Podcast, let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on uh, on either going to photography school or learning at YouTube University, doing it yourself, the passion, the purpose, the business, the whole side of this industry that you might be interested in. So if you let us know uh, down below in the comments, maybe Dermot and Darren and myself will be able to respond to you there. Now, that is time for our first break. So lads, I have a uh, special surprise for you. This uh, episode, getting close to 100 episode of the Irish Photography Podcast. This probably doesn't actually count up to your 100 because it's a bonus special edition, but it is sponsored by Hanel Industries. Now, <laughs> Hanel Industries makes some absolutely quality products that you can uh, purchase to, uh, to make your photography outstanding, much, much better than it would be without these products. The one that I have here is the Giga T Pro 2, and that is a intravolometer that I bought in Australia. And this has traveled with me to many, many different places and has been mostly used for star astro time-lapse work that I originally started doing with Canon 5D Mark III. And it worked so well that I decided to throw out my Canon 5D III, but keep the Giga T Pro 2 when I purchased the EOS R. And I still use this as my wireless intervalometer for shooting epic, majestic, incredible landscape photography time lapses. Thanks, Hanel, for everything that you do. Absolutely brilliant. And you're very welcome back to this second part of the extremely ill-illusioned version of the bonus edition of the Irish Photography Podcast, featuring not only Darren J. Spoonlead, but also Dear Moto Donovan, hosted by myself, Greg Snell. So let's jump right back into it. Now, Dodd, I understand that you've traveled to a few places uh, like the Lofoten Islands and the Isle of Skye, the Dolomites, and even the Lake District. So the question that I got for you is that you're running your own business in Ireland. And since I've been in this self-isolation quarantine, uh, I've been having a hard time inspiring myself to go out and take photos. And I was wondering what keeps you inspired about photographing uh, locations, landscapes in Ireland? And uh, yeah, I mean, what's the inspiration to shoot in your own backyard? It's very, very simple because what we have here in Ireland is called something the Wild Atlantic Way. Now, it's always been there, but it's just some marketing genius came up with this idea for this stretch of coastline. It goes literally from North Donegal to uh, the south of County Cork. And it's just absolutely amazing. Ireland has some of the most beautiful, rugged coastlines that you could ever imagine. I mean, there's something new around every corner possible. But you know what keeps dragging me back to the same spot is a place called the Cliffs of Moher. It's just it's mm, world renowned. It's 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 somewhere where everyone wants to be. Nick Page was here last year, for God's sake. I mean, like it's just so beautiful. And when you get the right light on this location, there's nowhere else in the world I'd rather be. Ah, oh, that's awesome, man. So I'm gonna kind of transition off of that to uh, to Darren. Now, Darren, I I understand that you started the uh, the Facebook group for Munster Photography, and uh, that Munster is the province of uh, of Cork, I believe, right? The second biggest city in Ireland, and apparently the best one to live in as well. It so, is, yeah, uh, it is the best. Now, to be fair, now Munster is one of the provinces in Ireland, so. Ireland has four provinces. You've got Leinster, which is where Dublin is. You've got Ulster, which is up the north. You've got Connacht, which is on the west. And you've got... Yeah, all right, Darren. Uh, let me just go ahead and finish my, my question there. So uh, I know that you started uh, YouTube back in 2017 and you've been releasing vlogs uh, once a week since then, which is awesome. And we're going to touch on that in a little bit. But like similar to Dermot, I know you've got a family and you've got kids and, uh, you know, maybe it's a little difficult to travel. You've got a full time job. How do you stay inspired to uh, to shoot videos and, and photograph in your own backyard? 
It's a, an interesting one as well, very similar to what Dermot had said. I mean, look, we're, we're, we're very lucky in Ireland because Ireland is a beautiful place. And there's so many areas in Ireland that I've yet to discover. I've only barely scratched the surface. And, you know, you can go back to the iconic areas and you can say, OK, these places are nice and I want to go shoot and I want to get those shots. But there's so much to discover and there's so many different areas, I think, that you can find a new shot every time that you go. So from a video point of view, it really started for me as an accident because I go taking photos and then I'd send a video of what I'm looking at um, to my friends, you know, and actually at the time, I suppose I remember watching, it was Thomas Heaton and I remember sending videos going, oh, look, I'm, I'm pretending to be Thomas Heaton per se when I'm sending the guys <laughs> the videos. But then I started to enjoy it a bit more and then I started to enjoy putting the video together afterwards and I kind of started to make one or two. But then something hit me was that, you know, you mentioned about it being hard to get out and get photographs because of my kids. And when I'm gone in the morning, if they wake up and I'm not there, or if I'm gone in the afternoon, I'm not coming back for them to go to bed, then, you know, they could be wondering where I am. I mean, they're three and five at the moment. So I hit on something and I said, you know what, if I make these videos, effectively, it's a legacy for my kids that when I'm dead and gone, they've got something that they can look back over and see where I went. Uh, hopefully learn, obviously, photography uh, and, you know, and see the beauty of the things that I would have seen in the story of what really got me, I suppose, you know, keep me enthused to go out and take photographs every single time. So from creating and making videos, like I say, it was an accident, but I'm really after being bitten by it. And I really do enjoy the whole idea of telling the story and trying to put my spin on something really on a, a, an event that I might do or sorry, a place that I might go. But what I really like about it even more so, and you know, Dermot, you'll even see this yourself, is that we've gone on a number of trips together and we've both recorded video and we've both come away with completely different videos yeah. from the same scene with a different story and a different idea. And I think that's what I love about filmmaking because you can take a photograph, which is a, okay, it's a 2D image of a 3D scene. Um, but to be able to take that and into a, a moving picture and then take the sounds as well. And I think that becomes an immersive experience. What we're missing basically is the cold and the smell uh, and the feeling that we always get here in Ireland, which is relentless wind. And that's, I think, what makes it even more, you know, interesting every time that you go out. Because look, the weather forecasters in Ireland have the easiest job in the world, to be honest. It's cloudy with a chance of rain. <laughs> so, you know. Rain. Rain. Sounds like North Germany as well. Yeah, no, hey, I can 100% relate to that. The reason that I started making videos over 10 years ago now uh, was to send to my friends and family. Like, that was it. There was uh, Facebook had just started, and I don't think we could put up videos on Facebook. I knew I could do photos, but I actually used to do like emails and I would make videos and then actually uh, burn them onto a DVD, get people's address, mm. and send the DVDs wow. to all my friends and family wow. so they could put it in their DVDs. DVD player and watch the videos and they're just terrible really? yeah they're absolutely terrible all those videos are on this channel for those of you watching this if you want to see like some of the worst and yet <laughs> best memories for me because they're memories <laughs> at the end of the day that's what we're creating right like you just said uh your kids want to watch this like it's absolutely. a good idea for them to have a, a view into your world and how you tell stories and uh and you and dear going on the same trip so that you could both sort of show your version of, of the same tour which is awesome Awesome. I mean, there's this, if you're willing to do it, then why not, right? You can create yeah. your own little mini documentary about your life. I mean, some people don't want to share that, but others are, are happy with it. So yeah. anyway, I'm getting off topic. You're getting me off my notes, guys. Come on now. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Let's change the subject. All right. Dear Mid, yes, sir. in August of 2018, you decided to set up the Irish Photography Podcast. Yes, sir. Now, uh, I know that you set it up with your co-hosts, Darren and John Myler. The podcast is about to air its 100th episode coming up this Friday, uh, which is a milestone for sure. One of the reasons I wanted to invite you guys here onto the bonus special edition episode of the Irish Photography Podcast. Um, did you ever think that you would make it to a 100th episode. Well, of course, with me and uh, the star of the show on the seat, it's definitely going to make 100 episodes. Why not? Like, I am the, the, the pretty one. Everyone comes to see me. You know, of course it is. Why wouldn't? <laughs> but on a serious note, look, most podcasts, and we statistically looked this up before we even started, right? Most podcasts fail after seven episodes. So that's not really good. It's not a good percentage to have going into the game. But we did a lot of research. We practiced quite hard. So we'd like, we practiced for about two months before we even released our first episode to get a few reps under our belt 
and kind of uh, generate and move forward. And boy, did we have fun. I mean, we didn't always agree with each other. It always wasn't rosy golden that you hear or see online. Sometimes things don't go our way and sometimes we clash and that's fine. And if, because if you don't clash, then the, the real feelings aren't getting out and that's where problems start to happen. So, you know, so with myself and Darren and John, we always said how we feel from the start. And if there was ever a problem, we'd say it straight out. Don't, don't bottle it up, just get it all out there. And it was, it was absolutely great. And a hundred episodes later, 99 episodes later, not a hundred yet, things still could go wrong. <laughs> Hold on to yourself there now. Hold on to yourself. <laughs> things still could go wrong. But man, it has been a, a roller coaster of a ride and I wouldn't change a single thing. I mean, it's just been amazing getting to spend so much time with John and Darren the whole way through this. And do you know, it's not, it's not just been a podcast. It's just been about three guys just hanging out and being able to lean on one another. Lean on me <laughs> when you're not That's strong. strong. All right, so Darren, yeah, I mean, it's it's so bloody inspirational, Dodd, thanks. Uh, Darren, you've been a co-host on the Irish Photography Podcast since it began, uh, and I want the viewers watching this, if they don't listen to the podcast, to hear your take on, on sort of what it is for you like what is 100 episodes why do you keep going with the podcast like i understand that it's uh inspirational educational and sometimes even controversial true story but, yeah. uh, i listen to the podcast i enjoy it because i love photography so i'm interested from one of the creators the co-host what's your take on like what is the irish photography podcast well okay i mean kind of get to go on the same guy as the it started but you know i mean it'd be nothing without me because i'm the brains behind oh, it okay Jesus. so Without me, it would just would have fallen apart and failed after the eight episodes, to be fair. And, you know, like we do have a good laugh and we do try and have fun. And, you know, when John, I suppose, was involved, it was the three of us and it was great because it, we joked and we jest and said, you know, oh, we need Darren because Darren's going to keep us in check. You know, Daddy's the, Darren's the daddy and he's going to tell us when we're bold yeah, and stuff like that. True right? story. True story. Right. So, you know, to this day, I still kind of do it with Darren at a time, but it's only to kind of push him on, really, because, you know, I think. The both of us, we, we we work very, very well together in the podcast. You know, we do have a good rapport. We, we get on well off the podcast. And just coming up with the different kind of topics that we had to do on a weekly basis, it really focuses your mind. And, you know, nothing focuses your mind better than a deadline. I mean, you've got a looming deadline every single week and you've got to put something out there. We don't just want to throw something out there. We want to make it entertaining. We want to make it something which is beneficial. So... We tried to come up with different ideas and different concepts, not just to have a chat and, you know, shoot the shit. Pardon my language if I said it on your channel, Greg. But, you know, it's uh, it's something that we always wanted to do is make sure that we had fun. And to echo what Dermot has said, I would not have changed one thing. Um, you know, every single one that we have done has been great. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot about photography. Like I said, from the outset, I'm a landscape photographer. That's all I do. But I've learned so much. I've tried so many different things. and And then... Not only coming up with the topics, but then we said, okay, hang on a second, let's see what others are doing out there. And, you know, it starts with one person, you get a guest on, and then you have a conversation with them, and you say, okay, I've learned something from them. And I think that's where, you know, I think from my point of view, some of the best memories that I have have is that sharing those moments with my buddy, Dermot, uh, on the podcast, having the laugh, uh, like I said, and having the laugh with ourselves, but also with the people that are on. So it's been fun, really, for the 99 episodes, and I do have... Uh, some pretty good uh, memories and you know even like we've only recently transitioned now I suppose over trying of adding video into it but even on the audio if it was video at the time I think it would have probably been hilarious because of the amount of times that we messed up um, and that you hey, you start again but you're still trying to get the, the joke that was in your head that made you lose your train of thought out of your head to continue recording on the next part so you know it's been it's been a roller coaster but a fun fun roller coaster so far Nah, right on. That sounds uh, fantastic. I mean, I think the whole idea behind this video is to try and share with more people the Irish Photography Podcast. So if you guys are interested in checking out what Darren and Dermot have been up to, uh, link in the description, of course, and be sure to turn in, tune in to their 100th episode, which is happening this Friday. So that's very, very cool. Nice little plug there for you. That'll be 50 bucks. You could PayPal directly to the same email address that we started this, uh, this Zoom chat with. I mean, video. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> So Dermot, Dermot pays and twirls these days, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've distracted me. Come on now. All right. So, so Dermot, in uh, January of 2019, you started a YouTube channel, and uh, yeah. you are two years behind Darren. So 
got a lot of uh, work to do to catch up there. Uh, but it, he did say that recently you've passed 1,000 subscriber mark. So congratulations. That is actually a genuine like benchmark that's relatively hard to get to. And uh, I know from experience that you know, zero to 1,000 and the 1,000 to 10,000 are, are two pretty big benchmarks. So I, I'm sure you're well in your way, but congrats on hitting 1,000. Now, I know a lot of the people that watch uh, this uh channel and listen to your podcast, know that you guys feature a lot of YouTubers. I want to know what your advice would be to photographers who are interested in starting a YouTube channel. My advice for anyone interested, and <clears throat> I don't mean to blow my horn or anything like that, but we, myself and Darren, have spurred on kind of this new wave of landscape photographers to YouTube here in Ireland. So you've got the likes of uh, Thomas Casey, Derek O'Brien, Graham Kelly, just to mention a few. And there's others coming in now as well. Now, I don't know if we definitely influence them, but since we've started, more and more people have come on the scene and it's absolutely amazing. But the one bit of advice that I would try to give anyone new starting out is try to get your audio crystal clear because you can have absolutely the most beautiful footage in the whole wide world but if your audio isn't good and don't get wrong we've made these mistakes ourselves so don't feel hard done by if you do make this mistake but try so get it to a reasonable uh, uh reasonable kind of benchmark that you can have for your vlog yeah, no, that's a, that's a really uh, good point. Audio is so key. And the amount of times that I've screwed it up and then tried to like p patch it all back together in Premiere Pro, and it's just like, it's terrible. I think audio recording is just a basic of videography. That's one of those, uh, those sort of chapters that stands alone uh, that you have to learn. It's so important. Now, uh, Darren, what's your take? What would you... Uh, what would your advice be? I guess you've been making YouTube videos since 2017. I mean, that's quite a long time. Uh, it's impressive that you've done one a week. I've been subscribed to you for a couple of years uh, and I enjoy your videos. So what would your advice be to somebody who's looking to start a channel or even already has a channel, but they're just looking to like make more videos or, or kind of change it up a bit? What's your advice? The first thing I would say is do it. Don't be afraid of it. If you want to do it, do it because you just get better by doing uh, and, you know, you can put so many different barriers in the way and say, I'll do it when. It's like everything in life. You know, if you want to do something, the first step is to take the first step. Uh, and then you learn as you go along with that. But I echo again what Dermot said about audio. Um, but moreover, I think, you know, from the viewer watching, the audio is something that you will either can put up with or it's unbearable. If it's unbearable, you can have the best looking footage, the best looking images, the best looking story. But the audience is not going to be able to bear the, um, the, the, the sound, let's just say. But um, it depends on what somebody's doing from a YouTube channel, because from a creator point of view, like I say, I'm a landscape photographer, but YouTube, and you know yourself, Greg, you know, from a, having a, a camera, it opens up so many different things that people can do with that camera. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just landscape. It can be product filming. So if you get good at B-roll by learning it in the landscape, which, you know, Greg, and I'll say it to you, you are the B-roll king. Um, like it is something that you can transition and take away from the landscape. So you can learn by making your videos, but you actually could do something outside of that from what you've learned, but purely, like I say, by doing and getting better every time. Awesome. Those are two uh, really good points, kind of overlapping each other, but I, I agree with you. And I hope that people watching this, if you're still watching this, uh, agree also. So uh, listen, guys, I want to sort of tease the uh, the next section because you guys have had a, a hell of a lot of really great guests on the podcast. And I think that it inspires a lot of people to, to listen. It's not just you two bantering on about photography and gear and settings. It's about the guests that you have on and uh, learning from them. For example, Michael Shane Bloom or Greg Benz, Nick Page. Um, you know, these are really like influential photographers that have uh, a really interesting story. And I think a lot of people tune in to hear those stories. Um, so we're we're going to dig in to some of your stories in the next segment of what were the most awkward interviews that you ever had and what were some of the best uh, interviews and why. So just a little teaser of what's to come next. But before uh, you sort of, you know, brainstorm on what those stories are going to be, we need to take another break to hear a word from our sponsor. And you're very welcome back to the third and final part of this semi-retarded, ill-illusioned <laughs> version of the special edition of the Irish Photography Podcast. I'm glad that you're still with us. And also thank you for that word from our sponsor. It sounds like the perfect drink to go with a nice picnic. So getting back 
to the seriousness here on the notes, let's bring it back to the podcast. So you've interviewed some pretty incredible guests over the almost 100 episodes, 100 episodes this Friday. I'm sure you've got a ton of really amazing stories to share, but I want to know about the most awkward ones. So tell me, what is the most awkward experience you've had on the podcast and why? We'll start with you, Dermot. Oh, thank God he went to Dermot first. I'll actually go way back to our first season, our very uh, our first special guest, Michael O'Sullivan. His content is off the off the stage. I mean, like his brain for photography is absolutely amazing. Amazing. He's the ex president of the Irish Photographic Federation, and his knowledge is just through the roof. But we were very early in our stage of the podcast, so our questions weren't exactly on point. They weren't absolutely amazing. We really enjoyed doing the podcast, don't get me wrong. But then what didn't help is the fact that we were doing this podcast while he was driving his car. Mm-hmm. So his audio is going straight through his phone mm-hmm. then as well to make even matters worse. So the audio, and contradicted to myself also back in ep- uh, the second part of this, and it's just it was so bad. True I story. mean, but look, I really enjoy talking to Michael, and we're and we like he's such a nice guy. I I meet him every few months, you know, just to chat or just to chat and just have a have a bit of a laugh. But yeah, that would have been the most awkward interview. But yeah, I enjoyed it nonetheless. Yeah, but it shows again audio. Audio is so so important. Hey, and uh, and that really can ruin it. It's like on Skype when you're having that like kind of delay and you're talking over one another, <laughs> and then people are like, like you go, oh no, no, you you go. It's like a Canadian thing. We're like, oh sorry, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, I was in the way. Oh no, but you know, I should have let you go first. Oh hey, no, you know what? Let hey. me buy you a beer. You know what? I'll Here's buy you wallet. four beers. You know, it's just it's just terrible. So anyway, Darren. What was the most awkward memory you have of the uh, the last 99 episodes of the Irish Photography Podcast? Of, of the guests that we would have had on, and you say, you know, we've had a lot. Uh, I think, thankfully, it's been a lot more fun uh, than we've had kind of awkward moments. But one for me, and it's probably unknown, I suppose, really, to Dermot or the audience, is when we had a guy on, Doxy, and he was a phenomenal oh, character. Yeah, and he was a phenomenal character, and, you know, it was really, really good. But, you know, we normally do... The um uh, the podcast we do video as well, but not recording video, but video of the person we're talking with, so that you can get a feel for what you're saying and you can see the reactions to the questions that you're asking and whether or not you have to stop asking the question or you're going there on the right track and stuff like that. But Paul couldn't have any uh, video working, so it was very awkward for me to be able to get a gauge in the conversation. And I know, Dermot, you as a scuba diver, and you know, Greg, as you as a scuba diver, a dive master, two of you guys would have been waxing lyrical talking with Paul because he was phenomenal in regards to the content that he gave us on shooting underwater. But there was some great nuggets of humor as well mixed into it. And for me, because I couldn't see who who, who he was, so I didn't, I'd never seen him before. I didn't know who I was talking to. Um, I had no real expectation. And as I was going through it and he was <laughs> revealing more and it was becoming more and more fun, I was like, okay, geez, I don't know what to ask this guy because I don't know what I can and what I can't ask. So I said, you know what, I'll just sit back. And Dermot pretty much took the reins on that one. But for me, it was kind of awkward because we didn't have the, the way to be able to see, like I say, from the facial expressions. All right, that is definitely not as dramatic as I wanted it to be. So I'm going to take this a little bit further. Tell me, wh- you don't need to mention any names. It doesn't need to be about guests or people. Tell me what you think was one of the worst experiences or memories that you have from recording one of the podcasts over the last 99 episodes. Like the worst. How could it be any worse than it was? Tell me that. And we'll go back to you, Dermot, for this one. Oh. Um, I can't think of one right now. Darren, do you, do, have you got one? And then Kim, come back to me maybe if I can think of one. Yeah, I have one, yeah. Um, I, I suppose it got, it's got to do okay. with, uh, we say, audio quality and getting things right. And, you know, I did a, a podcast actually with Gary, Gary Goff. He's a, a guy from the UK. And I had schooled him in advance of it and said, okay, you know, look, let's get this right. Here's what you need to set up, et cetera, et cetera. But then I recorded the audio not through the microphone that I normally use, which you see here, but actually through the audio of my headphones. So it was diabolical audio on my part, I suppose, really. And, you know, I felt for Dermot at the time because he had Ouch. to edit the podcast. And I remember the time him giving out, and even, you know, we even said it during it, uh, that Darren, the, the Gambine, never <laughs> recorded his audio through the right way. But when it came then to me being on the receiving end of receiving files from guests 
and then receiving something that I'm going, oh my God, how can I even do something with this file? I can't do anything with it. Uh, and, you know, Ouch. we've gone to this thing and we've actually yeah. said, we're going live. We have this person. We've told the, the, the general public on our Facebook group and, and so forth like that, that we've got this person coming on. So there was no backing out then at that point. And it was horrendous to try and get the whole thing uh, put together. Uh, and so I kind of, I felt Dermot's pain, I suppose, really. But uh, yeah, I've had a couple of those now um, uh, in, in recent times because now we're adding in video as well. So hopefully now, you know, Greg, you don't have the same experience uh, when I send you my files over for you to do this uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. I mean, I can speak from experience as a videographer that sometimes you just like make a silly mistake and you're just kicking yeah. yourself because you can't go back and reshoot that scene, you know, and uh, especially in travel and especially like video making for vloggers in the field. It's just like you got one shot, one opportunity, you know, drop the mic Eminem yeah. and uh, it's, you got to get it right. So, but you're bound to make mistakes and that's how we learn. That's part of the game. But uh, yeah, that was a bit better, I guess. Thank you. Dermot, have you had time to think about what was like the worst memory? All right, yeah. let's hear it. What do you got? I mean, is one of the main people that we've ever had on the podcast. I mean, he's one of my heroes as a photographer and I even had him critique my work on a video. Greg might link that up here. Uh, <laughs> but it was Nick Page's podcast. Remember oh that, my Derek? God. Where we were so excited to have Nick Page on and everything that could go wrong could go wrong. I mean, Nick had to bail us out. My internet wouldn't work. I mean, we couldn't even talk to each other. Everything was stuttering. Everything was going so bad. And it was so embarrassing because this guy is up here. He's on a whole new level. And here's us at the bottom trying to have, just even talk to this guy. I mean, like we were like school children trying to talk to Nick. And he was such a nice guy. He bailed us out of that podcast. It was just, thank God. He uh, introduced us in this thing called Zencaster. And he recorded all our audio and put it all together and sent <laughs> it did. to us. So Nick Page, Amazing. thank you so Absolute much, gent. buddy. Yeah, Nick is legend. I know you guys know this, uh, that I was traveling with him in the US and I hope he's watching this. But for those of you who don't know this, uh, the three of us know Nick Page uh, pretty well. And uh, he can be a harsh critic on, uh, on audio and video and photo. And yeah. at the same time, extremely nice with his feedback. And uh, any kind of like critical feedback should always be taken in the light of positivity, even if it is uh, harsh. And I think that uh, he's just like a really nice guy when it comes to sharing knowledge and uh, being there for you when, when you need the help. So that's awesome that uh, that was actually a bad memory, dear me, that turned out to be a good one. Oh yeah, correct. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So let's segue that into uh, into my next question, which is a bit of more lighthearted. What were some of your most memorable episodes and why? And uh, we can jump to you, Darren, on this one. Most memorable episode and why? Oh, Greg, that's some question. Uh, okay. Uh, so people that would have listened to the podcast should know that, you know, we talk about cameras quite a lot because Dermot is the, you know, self-confessed and crowned king of gas. Okay. So when we talk about cameras a lot, you know, most cameras are made in Japan. And when it comes to the news and we have to talk about the person who has released the press statement or who has introduced the product or whatever it may have been, it is somebody with obviously with a Japanese name and Dermot cannot ever pronounce a Japanese name correctly. And there was one that we tried to do. And I think we, like, we're generally quite good. You know, we get things in the first take, you know, we don't really have to do things much, but on this one, I think it took us probably around 15 takes um, because I was completely uncontrollable from laughter. Uh, Dermot then at the same point, you know, when you kind of get a laughter bug and you can't get rid of it. Uh, so everything he tried to do the whole way through and it was just so much fun. And the best thing about it was um, that John uh, was the one actually making that podcast, putting it together that for that episode. And he created an outtake of it. So we actually have that audio of us just absolutely losing it with Dermot trying to uh, 
pronounce Japanese names. So there's been many, Greg. It's very hard for me to pick one, um, but that's one most definitely because it summarizes what we want to try and do, you know, have fun on the podcast. We're talking about a topic which most people should enjoy. So we want to have fun and we most definitely had fun on a lot of them, but that's one that sticks in my mind. Yeah, nice. And uh, Dermot, anything come to mind? Well, I, I can see you kind of chomping at the bit there. Let's uh, let's hear some of your favorite memories from uh, the Irish Photography Podcast. Yeah, well, one of my favorite memories is uh, would be Richie Hatch. So Richie Hatch is uh, an Irish photographer, uh, architecture, architectural. Jesus, he's got to shoot me now because I said it wrong already. <laughs> um, but uh, such a nice guy, a one guy, and he had uh, he had this camera and he, t- he was taking pictures. Uh, Darren, what, what was it? The, the nice lady calendar. Oh and yes, his friend was taking pictures. And he went in and pretended that his wife, that he was taking pictures of his wife or something like that. And then Richie absolutely uh, pooped a brick like, and he actually confronted him about this. But it was all a big hoax. It's a big joke. I'd have to research the story exactly how it was. But it was, I, I was incontrollable when he was telling the story. I actually think I weed a little in my own pants, <laughs> if I'm being honest. It was so funny. Um, but yeah, if like... Uh, if you can stick a link down below to the, the episode, you'll you'll understand it a whole lot better than I'm explaining it, but it was really, really good. <laughs> that was great. That was a great episode. No, I'll do that for sure. One of the things that, uh, that I wanted to do with this whole idea behind this video was to uh, show more people your podcast because it's so good to just have on listening to in the background or now that you're doing the vidcasts, Darren, to be able to watch it on your channel. Uh, but you guys are coming up to episode 100, which is absolutely incredible, big milestone, and uh, and something you should be proud of. So congratulations, and I will definitely link that episode uh, in the description. You just have to send it to me, Dermot, because I don't know how to find it. Uh, all right, so let's move on. There's a segment that you guys always do on your podcast called uh, VSP, and what VSP stands for is a very solid product, and it is usually a recommendation of a photography product or piece of gear uh, from either you two or your guest. So I wanted to throw that question on to you guys. Uh, now, you did mention GAS, mm-hmm. Darren, and for those uh, viewers who don't know what GAS is, it's also an acronym. GAS is the Gear Acquisition Syndrome, which apparently Dermot is the king of because he has all the gear that you could ever need. Uh, so let's go to you, Dermot, then. What is your VSP for this uh, very uh, special edition version of the Irish Photography Podcast? I'm at Opic 2, no? You are. Yes. I think I know what yeah. one of them okay, is going to okay, be. It's okay. probably the Rhino slider yeah, that you were yeah. setting me up. Jesus. Up yeah. It's like you're in my brain, man. Yeah, the Rhino slider ROV Pro Traveler. It's absolutely amazing. I love this thing. And like talking about bugs, I've been caught by this caught by this bug for time lapse photography. And Michael Shamebloom has uh, lured me into this, and it's just it's something about it. It's just amazing to watch poetry in motion, really. Uh, and using this tool, the Rhino slider, is just it makes everything so easy for you. It's so good. I love it so much that it went away and just invested this week on its bigger brother called the Rhino Slider Evo. This is a big, massive 42 inch rail, uh, carbon fiber everywhere. It's absolutely so sexy. I can't wait to get it. I really can't wait. But my second gas thing and would have be the Sigma 105 Boca Monster. This thing is the most beautiful portrait lens that you could ever own you're never going to get any better than this it's a 1.4 aperture and it's ridiculously sharp even wide open at 1.4 when i shoot a wedding i normally have a 35 mil lens and i'll change that one up but the, but the 105 doesn't even come off the camera it stays on it all day long it's that good i like oh it's beautiful and it's affordable as well i think it's about 13 or 1400 euros well worth the money yeah really great okay uh two VSPs, solid products. Thank you, Dermid. Uh, Darren, do you have one in mind? What's your VSP for this? Uh, this well, uh, my, my VSP, which is for a very special podcast, actually, kind of is a good another acronym for, for, your, for your podcast this evening, uh, Greg. Yeah, but my VSP, I don't, sure. I don't, I don't suffer from uh, gas uh, as much as Dermid anyway, you know. I will wait a while and I'll wait for, for potentially something to come onto the market secondhand. And that's exactly what I did with the product that I chose for my VSP. And it's a product... I don't know if you have one, Greg, but quite a lot of people that use video and record for YouTube now have one. And it's kind of revolutionized how you record video on the go. Um, in actual fact, I'm recording my video 
this evening on it itself. It's that versatile. So it's the Osmo uh, Pocket, and it's a phenomenal piece of kit because you've got 4K quality in your pocket. It's gimbal controlled. The app is so sexy to use. It's so easy to use. Um, even the audio from it as well that you get in, like I said earlier on when we're out in the, the landscape in Ireland, is windy quite a lot. It's quite good as well at dampening wind, but it's so good that you can even plug in a lavalier mic as well. So if you want to get that external audio perfectly fine as well, it's really, really good. So 4K quality. And I waited, like I said, till it came on the secondhand market and I bought it for, I don't know, 100 euro or 120 euro less than what it should have cost at list price. But that's mine. And it's rare for me to pick a VSP because Dermot normally takes the rain on the VSP. And we've had a lot of them as well. So I'm surprised that Dermot was able to whittle it down to two, Greg. Yeah, I am too. And I'm glad that he stopped at two. <laughs> so the DJI Osmo Pocket, that is uh, the Spasmo Rock. Yeah. 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 By Mr. Coined by Mr. Hardcastle himself. Yes. Yeah, I've seen that thing in action. It is like a whipping knife, you know? It's just like, <laughs> wow, like a switchblade. He just puts it in front of you. He goes, talk to the camera. <laughs> oh, Crazy. Jesus. Absolutely amazing piece of kit and not very expensive yes, from what I exactly, gather. Yeah. So, not really, really yes, good. that is a uh, good BSB. Good shot. And for those of you that are still watching, congratulations. <laughs> that is fucking awesome. All right, so <laughs> in the last 100 episodes on the podcast... What would you say, like, I don't know, well, like, say you want to reminisce about this, right? Like, we're making a memory for you guys about coming up on 100 episodes. What would you say to yourself five, 10 years from now about what it means to be uh, so close to 100 episodes? Tell the viewers, you know, how you feel about that. We start with you, Dermot. It's, it's, um, it's something monumental and Goals in life are very important. Milestones in life are something that everyone should have and something to strive towards because it gives you a sense of achievement and where you, you've been in life. So like my uh, YouTube channel, 1,000 subscribers, that was a massive thing for me. It was like to get that monkey off my back so I can kind of tell myself that I'm getting up to the same standard as Darren. I'm getting there. You know, I'm on that ladder and bit by bit, I'm going to get better and better and better. And it's the same thing with the podcast. I mean, getting to 100 episodes, one every Friday for since August 2018, is just monumental. It's something special about it. And like I said earlier at the start of this vlog, that most podcasts don't get past seven. God damn it, we're at nearly 100 episodes. That's got to be special, right? Hell yeah. Yeah, it sure is, man. And Darren, uh, what's your take? Like, what would you say to yourself five years, 10 years from now about, uh, about turning the corner on 100 episodes? Uh, geez, Greg, you know, I've had many thoughts over it, I suppose. If it's summarizing into one, I suppose, in a nutshell is, wow, look what you've done. How did you do it? I mean, if you think in regards to, you know, we're two small guys here, really, from Ireland. You know, we're, we're not big names or anything in regards to the photography scene, but yet we're kind of punching above our weight, you know. Um, like we, we had you, you on the podcast, you know, we've had Maz Peter Everson on the podcast. Um, we've had Nick, we've had, you know, um, Gavin, we've had Adam, we've had Thomas Heaton, uh, you know, the big names, I suppose. Tifuego. Tifuego yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we got some very good names, I suppose, in the, in, the, in the scene right now. And I'm sure that as things will go on, we'll get even more names and still keep up with the people I'm delighted I can call friends right now, e.g. you. Uh, so, you know, when I look back at this in five years, I'll say exactly like I said at the start, is that photography for me is about meeting people and getting to know people and we've certainly done that so far and i'm really excited to see what the next 100 brings for us yeah it's about the community i think there's uh, one thing that i've learned about being in the world of uh, social media is even though people are so far away and, and distant and they may never meet each other in person if they share the same passion and the same purpose for uh, for a subject, you know, they can connect really easily. And people are genuinely pretty nice. You know, I've traveled to almost 100 countries and I speak three languages and I know a ton of, of different people all over the world. And I've only had really good experiences with all those people. I don't like to burn bridges. And uh, and you two are, are two of those people. And I do have a feeling that we will meet in person one day. But I think you know, you're creating memories and you're making something special with the Irish Photography Podcast and I enjoy listening to it. And I think the people watching this video will enjoy listening to it as well uh, if they don't already. So um, yeah, something to be proud of guys and I'm glad that you're gonna keep going. So that brings me to my final question. What is 
the future of the Irish Photography Podcast. And don't just say, oh, we're just going to keep doing what we do. and We're going to grow bigger and have this community, blah, blah, blah. All that bullshit that I just said. I want you to tell me like maybe a bit of a strategic even plan of what you think would be like the next goal for the Irish Photography Podcast. And maybe you guys haven't even talked about this amongst yourselves, but what would you foresee as a goal for the podcast in the future? And uh, we'll go back to you, Dermot. Yeah, well, Darren kind of touched base in it kind of last year that he wanted to kind of go international. And I kind of second that motion, like we need to get out there. We need to expand our horizon more and more and more every year. And I think we've done that to a certain degree this year while teaming up with a good, very good friend of ours called Bernard Garrity. And we're going to look forward to even working with him more even into next year and get to different places in the world. And I think that's where you got to be, you got to be able to, like you, from your perspective, you've been to a hundred bloody countries, man. That is goddamn impressive. It's something Unreal. that I would love and aspire to do. So if we keep working at Bernard and like we keep doing his workshops and stuff like that and going to different countries, I think we'll kind of draw more attention to ourselves, not only for our YouTube channels, but for the podcast. And that's where our sole attention and where it's all started from and everyone else is kind of like just big that was the tree trunk and all these other things are like the branches of the tree and everything's kind of grow into one and marry into one another and it just happens like like i said we've got you on we've had maz tom you know it's just i i i really don't know what the future has for the podcast but i i know this for sure that it's going to be ridiculously promising and who knows what the world has in store for us yeah, it's a good metaphor with the tree trunk and then the uh, the limbs. Well done there. So, uh, Darren, what do you think, man? What's uh, what's your honest take on where it's going? It's hard for me to top it to top what what he's just said there, Greg. But I mean, look, you know, to kind of summarize a phrase from a very well known Irish person. Most people like him, some people don't. But Conor McGregor was, you know, we're not here to take part. We're here to take over. But we're not we're not here to take over. We're here to kind of have fun as we go along and spread our wings as as wide as we can in regards to having many different talents around the world uh, on the podcast to teach me and to teach Dermot, but also to help our audience. And that's the thing, I think, you know, the audience that comes with us on the podcast. And we have some really, really fantastic photographers that follow our podcast on a weekly basis. And that's an honor for me already to have that. And, you know, you're saying that you, you, you tune into the podcast. That's an honor for me to see and to hear that as well. So I just look forward to continuing what we're doing, bring more people along with us and Again, you know, have fun every step of the way. Right on. So thanks a million, lads. That is a really, really good way to uh, to end this video. Uh, it's been a little bit long, but if you're still with us, thanks so much for uh, listening and for watching and for hearing the story of uh, Darren and Dermid and the Irish Photography Podcast. It's definitely something to check out and, uh, and very interesting. So uh, yes, thank you to you two. It's a pleasure speaking with you both. And uh, Shalom Gafal. Ah, uh, oh, you were close. You were close. Is you that were right? Close. <laughs> Try one more time. Try one oh, more go time. Again, go again. Go again. I gotta hear this. Shalong. There you go. Yeah, that's Shalonga. better. That's better. That's that cool. was better. There it is. Yeah. We can't finish this podcast without hearing my ridiculously good Irish accent. I know you guys have been privy to this, but I don't think that the viewers at home have been. So if you're still watching this video and you're uh, you're this deep in it, then you are in for a very special surprise. You ready for this, Blind. lads? All right there. Well, thanks a million. It's been an absolute pleasure there talking with you guys. Oh, that's fucking Scottish, isn't it? Hold on. Let me start again. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a million, lads. It's been an absolute pleasure there. Ah, oh, it's still Scottish. It's still Scottish. Pleasure without oh, to be sure, to be Scottish. sure, to be Garda, be Garda. Yeah. Oh, thanks, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure. Well, thanks a million there, lads. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you here on the uh, this bonus edition of the Irish Photography Podcast. And uh, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed it as well. It's been uh, it's been fun. It's been a blast. It's been a crack of a good time. So uh, we'll leave it there. And uh, as, <laughs> I can't even I can't even all straight days. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> we can end this ten times over with me trying to do an Irish accent. It just gets worse and worse. Oh, it's funny just going as downhill. fuck. We gotta end it. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Dermid and Darren, for uh, for being a part of this video and for agreeing to do it. Uh, I think that uh, yeah, you guys are onto something special, and I'm looking forward to the 100th episode this Friday. And I uh, hope you are too. So be sure to turn in to the Irish Photography Podcast, and I will catch you on the next video right here on the channel. Bye-bye. Ayo. -bye. It's long to fall.